Yo, what's up, YouTube? Welcome back to another video. Welcome back to the channel, man. And today, we're going to talk about the keyless heel of the naturally aspirated LT1. Okay, so before we get into this video, we're going to start off with this nice fire shirt here that I got from Race Car 21. I appreciate the shirt, Race Car 21. Uh, he's a long term YouTube subscriber, man. So, I look, I accept all gifts and everything that from, I get from my subscribers, man. And this shirt is fire. It's pretty big. It looks good, man. I need to stand up so y'all can see it. He's a Mustang guy at that, man. So that's what's crazy about it, too. But he loved watching my Camaro content. He followed the MOC. If you don't know who the MOC is, man, that's the Race Car Friends, Q to Chaotic, and 100 Game Nate, man. So if y'all not following the MOC, y'all be sure to follow the MOC, man, because we dropping fire content all the time, man. So with that being said, now that we got the shameless plug out the way, we're going to talk about the Achilles Hill of the naturally aspirated LT1. I'll save it for another time for the LT4, but we're going to focus solely on the LT1. Okay? LT1, if you guys don't know, LT1 comes in the SS, SS1 LE, and the LT1. It sounds crazy I'm saying LT1 multiple times, but it's not my fault that GM was poorly named these cars poorly. Well, at least this last recent one, because then it gets all crazy when they add on the RS package on top of the LT1, and people get confused like, what's the RS package without the RS package? And for the longest time, the RS package really was for the V6. So, there you have it. So, with that being said, we just want to go ahead and jump straight into like, what is the Achilles heel for the LT1, naturally aspirated motors? But before we get into that, we're going to talk about the pros horsepower 465 torque yes i'm giving you guys corvette nerves because that's what it is chevy just detuned it just a little bit knocking off five or seven horsepower not big deal a 11 to 5 compression ratios direct injection linear power band it's made it to a tr6060 power train or you can go with the eight speed or 10 speed it depends on which you decide to get this uh camaro so Lovely engine is nice and throaty. It's a nice throat growth for people to the floor. Pause, no ditty. But I mean, you can't go wrong with it. But also, having a good powertrain, the same thing that helps the motor actually kills and hurt the motor at the same time, man. So, this is the Achilles Hill. The Achilles Hill of the 6.2 liter is the active fuel management the driver on demand and the pistons and rods which you normally hear is the afm or the dod so if you decide to get an ss or ss1 le you are in good shape because gm honored those vehicles at the track so whether you have the road course or the drag strip that is perfect for you as long as you do the bare minimal like replace the fluids replace the brake fluid you know does your sanity checks on the vehicle and make sure that the car is stock GM will honor that. Sometimes different dealerships get iffy because you can't even run a simple thing as a colder intake on there. Even though GM back in 2017 and 18 they had the colder inductions, now like this is getting real tricky. But the active fuel management is the same thing that helps the car on the street, hurts it on the road, on the road course or at the drag strip. And that's where the lifters come to play. And usually with GM, once they do a diagnostics, usually they replace one side of your 6.2. Uh, leader where the lifters have failed they're not going to replace both sides and also if you do decide to tune your 6.2 liter then all that warranty issue falls back on you and you got to take it to a performance shop usually most people just go ahead and avoid the warranty because at that point based on the amount of work you have to do they usually just go ahead and go heads and camp why because in order for you to get to the lifters you would have to remove the intake manifold the throttle body the colder intake the heads and the lifters is right there so if you sit back and think about it, it's pretty much cheaper to go ahead and go heads and camp at that point if a lifter fell and it varies it comes from over revving as well so that's what it is that's the keyless heel of the lt1 motor if you decide to throw a boost on the car you can throw a boost on it but it's very small boost six pounds of boost at that that will give you a nice horsepower but jump over stock but if you decide to go ahead in the future and add more boost then you're going to run into issues of throwing a piston in a rod because the pistons and rods are originally made for naturally aspirated, not to add boost in the car. So unfortunately, that's another keyless heel for the 
LT1 motor because it's not like the Coyote motors where you can throw a boost on top of the engine and it can handle it pretty uh, well. That's not the case in the Chevy world. So that's why they pretty much force you to go into that ZL1, get that LT4 if you want to go boost. Luckily, there are companies out here where you could do drop in pistons and rods and that make it easier. They can throw as much boost as you want on the car. But unfortunately, out the factory, this is what we got. This is what you're dealing with. There's not been too many issues where a piston and rod will throw out the engine usually lifters is a big deal but then that's a costly expense whether it's the lifters or the pistons and the rod so you got to pick your battles so like that man that's going to wrap this video up if you guys like this video y'all know what to do hit that like button subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video thanks for watching